What is going on everybody? Today I will be responding to you guys college football hot takes. We do this video just about every week and it is one of my favorite videos to make because I love interacting with other college football fans. So if you guys want to be a part of this video, then just look out for my YouTube community post asking for you guys hot takes because you guys can leave your hot takes there. But before we get into reading these hot takes, let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you'll love this channel. Because we upload a ton of college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing. And also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But without further ado, let's read some hot takes. This first verse says, UConn joins the ACC. They've got the biggest college basketball brand right now after going back to back. And they would make the ACC tons of money. Remember, the ACC makes a lot of money from basketball too. And football-wise, they are not great, but they've got history, tons of it. They had been in the Big East, and they weren't bad at all there. And geographically, it makes too much sense. Adding Connecticut will definitely stabilize the ACC as well. I do not know if UConn would join the ACC for football. They really haven't had the same amount of success since joining the American and then moving to the Independence. UConn is already split from different conferences in football and basketball. And I don't expect UConn to get in a powerful conference for football anytime soon because they haven't had a winning season since their days in the Big East prior to the 2010s. UConn is still in the Big East for basketball, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did move to the ACC, but I don't think it would make a whole bunch of sense for UConn to move to the ACC in football, other than the fact that they are geographically located in that area. And with the landscape of college football changing and super conferences slowly forming, that makes me more convinced that UConn isn't moving to the ACC for football, but maybe basketball though. This next person says Vanderbilt could go winless in the SEC this upcoming season. I don't know how this is a hot take. Vanderbilt could absolutely go winless in the SEC next season. They did it in 2023 and they also did it in 2021. They did bring in two solid quarterback additions out of the transfer portal. So maybe that could help them win a game in the SEC. But come on, it's Vanderbilt. Nothing will surprise me with Vanderbilt. This next person says Colorado will have the nation's best crowd to start the season. Having all the hype which I personally do not get as they went 4-8 and eight and are basically a very similar team. And the national attention will draw big numbers for them. That opener against North Dakota State will be rocking even for an FCS team. North Dakota State might win, but with a crowd like that, it will be hard. If guys like The Rock and DJ Khaled show up, who won't? But don't expect the hype to last too long. Colorado has one of America's toughest schedules, and yes, Shadir is a star and their O-line and defense should improve. But it won't be an overnight transformation. If Colorado keeps losing, the stadium will be way less packed when games are in Boulder. I've talked about Colorado a lot on this channel, and there's people that hype them up way too much. And then there are people who just hate Deion Sanders in Colorado. I'm kind of in the middle, and I hope Colorado doesn't get the same amount of attention like they did last year, because there's a lot more interesting narratives heading into next season. And I do think some people have already let off the hype train, but if Colorado versus North Dakota State becomes a packed house in an overwatched game, like Colorado versus Colorado State was last season, then I don't really care. Deion Sanders is going to draw attention because that's just who he is. And there's a lot of people that watch Colorado because of how much national attention Deion, his sons, and Travis Hunter get. Whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to enjoy the football the best I can. But regardless, I do expect Colorado to take a step up. It will not be an overnight transformation, and I doubt Deion is staying that much longer at Colorado. But I wouldn't be surprised if Colorado made bowl eligibility next season. We'll see how much hype they get. I was honestly fully bought into Deion Sanders in Colorado last season. But next season, I have a lot more other teams and interesting stories other than Colorado to look forward to. And this is probably my first college football season where I'm going all in as a truly passionate fan. And I really know the game pretty well heading into next season. Last season was definitely exciting and Colorado was probably one of my favorite teams to watch at the start of the last season. But now I'm paying attention to everything college football related and there is a lot of things much bigger than Colorado. This next person says Kansas State goes 11-1 and and I am pretty high in Kansas State heading into next season. And they have some difficult games on the schedule so I do not know if they will go 11-1 and but I do believe they are going to be a top 4 Big 12 team at the very least. They return 80% of production on defense which is actually top 4 in the whole country. The defense is going to be very good next season. They also have a solid quarterback going forward with Avery Johnson who has a lot of potential. Kansas State has been a very solid team the last couple of years and they even won the Big 12 championship in 2024. And do not be surprised if we see Kansas State win another Big 12 title very soon. 
because Texas and Oklahoma are no longer in the Big 12, and Kansas State may just be that new top dominant team in the Big 12. But I'm definitely sure that there are other teams that are going to try to give Kansas State a run for their money because the Big 12 is absolutely wide open. This next person says Arkansas State makes the national championship. This is definitely not a hot take because it's so obvious that Arkansas State is the only team in college football that is capable of winning a national championship. So I definitely agree. This next person says Colorado could be the worst team in the Big 12 this year. Here we go again with more talk about Colorado. And yes, Colorado could be the worst team in the Big 12, but they won't because you forgot Houston, Cincinnati, and Baylor are still in that conference. Oh yeah, and also Arizona State, the only Pac-12 team that Colorado beat last season. Oh yeah, and also TCU, another team that Colorado beat from the Big 12 last season. Colorado isn't great, but come on, they aren't that bad. Also, can I get some better hot takes? Some of these are just random and short and they don't really make for a great hot take. But thanks for the hot take anyways. This next person says Illinois should fire Brett Bilema. He's only had one good year with them and they won't likely be getting anywhere near the top this year. If Brett Bielema has another down season, then Illinois should at least consider firing him. But to be fair, he has only been there for three seasons, and he did lead them to an 8-5 record in 2022. And ultimately, he didn't keep the momentum going because Illinois wasn't that great and they went 5-7 and seven last season. And I do honestly expect the same type of season in 2024. They don't have many positives going for them. They lose their number one receiver to the NFL, and their defense has a lot of holes. The passing attack has to take a big step up if they want to be successful next season. And if Illinois can win six or more games, I'd lay back on the idea of firing Brett Bilema because Illinois is a very difficult team to rebuild. And they have been one of the worst teams in the Big Ten over the last 15 years or so. This next person says Khalil Moling starts over Donovan Edwards by the end of the year at Michigan. I think no matter what happens with the running back room, Khalil Mullings is going to see the field a lot. Michigan still has a great pair of running backs with Donovan Edwards and Kalel Mullings, but I have seen a lot more from Donovan Edwards at Michigan than I have Kalel Mullings, and I believe Donovan Edwards is going to be that top running back for Michigan going forward. He was the backup to Blake Corum for the last couple of seasons. Donovan Edwards only ran for just under 500 yards last season, but in 2022, Donovan Edwards ran for just under 1,000 yards, and I saw great things from Donovan Edwards in that national championship game against Washington when he ran for over 100 yards and 2 touchdowns with only 6 carries. Kalel Mullings has only gotten 50 carries over the last 2 years and he hasn't played a huge role like Donovan Edwards has. And I think it's clear that Donovan Edwards is the next starting running back for Michigan and I think he's going to be a beast. I do think Kalel Mullings is going to play a much bigger role next season but I don't see him starting unless Donovan Edwards gets injured. Hopefully that doesn't happen but you never know. This next person says UCLA could be the worst team in the Big Ten. And I actually don't think I would be surprised if UCLA finished last in the Big Ten. They have a pretty tough schedule next season, but they do have two home games against Minnesota and Indiana. Two teams UCLA is very capable of beating. But UCLA also has their fair share of concerns. They lost their defensive coordinator and head coach, Chip Kelly. They will not be as good on defense next season because they only returned four starters, but I do think the offense has potential with Ethan Garbers at quarterback. And they also did a pretty solid job in the transfer portal. And that's why I personally do not see them finishing last in the Big Ten. But I wouldn't be surprised if they did. This next person says Virginia Tech is a playoff contender. Manageable schedule, returning lots of talent and solid on both sides of the ball. And I do believe Virginia Tech has a lot of potential next season. Virginia Tech would probably have to make the ACC championship game if they want to make the playoffs. But let's be real, the ACC is wide open and Virginia Tech is first in the country for returning production. They really improved in the second half of last season, and Kyron Jones really stepped up at quarterback for this team when they needed him to. And he's only going to get better from here on out. Virginia Tech ended their season by dominating Tulane in their bowl game. I think Virginia Tech will be a legitimate contender for the ACC championship in 2024. I am personally a lot higher in Virginia Tech than most people probably are. And like you said, they should be good on both sides of the ball. Virginia Tech is definitely a dark horse to win the ACC and make the playoffs. This next person says Oklahoma State blows out Arkansas. Oklahoma State will have that game at home and Oklahoma State should be a lot better than Arkansas. Oklahoma State returned 77% of production which is top 4 in the whole country. They also returned the best running back in the country, Ollie Gordon. They should be one of the best teams in the Big 12 next season. But Arkansas still has some question marks. They only went 4-8 last season. Now I don't know if Oklahoma State will blow them out because Arkansas is still a very competitive team despite their struggles. Arkansas played in 5 one possession games last season and they were very competitive last season, but Oklahoma State should definitely win this game. 
Now I'm going to read one more hot take for this video. And this last person says, USC has a good shot at making the Big Ten Championship. Even if they lose to both the Notre Dame and LSU, it won't matter. And they don't play Oregon or Ohio State. And I really don't see USC making the Big Ten Championship next season. They do have to play on the road against Michigan and at home against Penn State. But they also have games at Washington and at Maryland. And then they play Nebraska and Wisconsin, two very solid teams at home. And I honestly do not see a world where USC wins enough games to make the Big Ten Championship unless the defense has an overnight transformation and shocks everybody. But the defense was atrocious last season. Now don't get me wrong, I know they have one of the most stacked defensive coaching staffs in the country, but I still think USC has a lot of more work to do. The offense should be in good hands with Milner Moss or Jada Maiava. They got two very solid quarterbacks and they have a 5-star receiver waiting to break out who is Zachariah Branch. And if USC wants to make the Big Ten Championship game, they will need help from other teams or they will probably only be able to lose one game in conference play. And for that to happen, they would have to have one of the biggest turnarounds I have ever seen on defense. I do expect them to be good and improve on the defensive side, and I do think they will compete in the Big Ten, but I'm not thinking Big Ten Championship yet. They do avoid Ohio State and Oregon, but the conference schedule is still pretty difficult, and I'm honestly expecting them to at least lose two games in the Big Ten Conference. But anyways, that is going to do it for today's hot takes. Let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you all love this channel because we upload a ton of college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But that is going to do it guys and peace out.